In this episode, we are going to look at the Tascam DR10L, which is a tiny little recorder that you would use with a lavalier microphone in place of a wireless lavalier. This entire episode has been recorded with the Tascam DR10L and the included lavalier microphone mounted up here or taped to my forehead just so you can get a sense for what it sounds like. Now let's compare to the Sankin Cos 11D just to see what kind of a difference there is between this lavalier microphone and the Sankin. And here we have the Sankin Cos 11D. This is a very popular microphone amongst professional mixers out there for film and TV. If you watch any film or television in the last 15 years you've heard this microphone at least once. And again, we have it mounted just under my hat right here on the forehead. This is so you can hear what it sounds like recorded into the Tascam DR10L. Wireless microphones come with a whole host of potential challenges. And so one of those, of course, is expense. Number two, there's always the potential for dropping your signal, interference, all sorts of potential issues. So the big advantages here, of course, are that it is less expensive by a significant margin than most professional wireless systems, certainly, and even a lot of the kind of enthusiast or prosumer type of systems. And not only that, but you often avoid most of the issues with interference and you avoid all the issues with wireless drops. So those are the, the kind of the big advantages here. The big disadvantage is that it does not send the audio directly to your recorder or to your camera. So you do have to sync the sound in post. Um, some people think that's a big issue and for their workflow, that's totally legitimate. If this isn't for you, it isn't for you, but it is a fairly cost-effective way to get the equivalent functionality of wireless without spending as much money if you're willing to take that additional step of syncing in post. Now the way this works is that instead of a transmitter and receiver, you have just the recorder, which is tiny. It's the size of a very small transmitter pack and it records to a micro SD card. There are a whole host of really positive things about the Tascam DRL. First of all, the actual case itself is sort of a hard plastic. It seems pretty high quality to me. It seems like you could probably drop it and it would probably sustain that fairly gracefully. I don't think you'd have a lot of uh, breaks the first time you drop it, so it seems pretty solid that way. It does have a locking connector for the microphone, which is really nice. It also has a headphone output, so you can monitor the audio, at least when you're getting it set up. Probably in most cases, you're probably going to want to use that while you're actually recording, but in any case, it's nice to have that so you can hear what you're going to actually be getting when you start recording. Again, the size is tiny. This is awesome. So if you need to hide it, this is not a hard one to hide. It is really, really small, which makes it very convenient. Also comes with a belt clip if you are going to clip it onto your talent, and it's a kind of a really stiff wire. Looks like it'll hold up just fine. Now, battery life, we're still testing. I'm still on my first battery. <laughs> I um, at about six and a half hours so far. Tascam publishes these numbers for different battery types in terms of what you can expect. And I can say that so far, it seems to be tracking nicely. So this is uh, looking pretty positive. Even if it were just six hours, which is where, you know, I passed that already. For me, that would be pretty, pretty decent and definitely workable. Now on the unit itself, it comes with a very small, what looks like an OLED screen. Um, it's a one line screen, so there's not a lot of real estate, but I actually think it works really well. They, in, they implemented it in a very nice way that makes sense. So pretty much what you have is a menu. <laughs> and when you're not in the menu, you have a tiny little meter, which is actually pretty effective, uh, along with a battery indicator and the name of the file and whether or not you're recording. So surprisingly, from my point of view, this tiny little screen works really well. And, and the benefit of having it so small is that it uses a lot less battery so you can get this amazing battery time. I've held my phone up to it directly to kind of test for RF interference along with, you know, doing web browsing and texting. And uh, it seems to hold up pretty nicely. I have not experienced any RF interference yet. So it appears that there must be some sort of RF shielding, hopefully. And uh, things are looking pretty good on that front. It can record to 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz the most common sample rates that you would use for film. And of course, it can record to both 16-bit and 24-bit word length, which is sort of the resolution, if you will. This is nice because on the Juice Link, when we looked at that, it was limited to 16-bit. This one actually goes 24-bit. You will use a little bit more battery life 
or you'll lose some battery life when you do record in 24-bit. But if you need to deliver that for your clients or for your particular piece, it's really nice to have that. This seems like a funny thing, but you can control the volume of the headphone output, which is nice. <laughs> there are some units that I've tested in the past where you had a headphone output, but you didn't have anything to control the volume of the headphone output. You can power this via USB on the port. Now, that's a little weird, you know, that'd be kind of strange to do that, but if you do need that option, um, it does have that option. What you cannot do is you cannot recharge a battery in the recorder itself. What is not so good? Well, let's have a listen to the limiter. Test! One, two, three! Testing the limiter! Not surprisingly, the limiter on the Tascam DR10L is a digital limiter, which means that it's not going to save you in cases where your talent suddenly screams or yells or laughs really loud or, you know, anything that tops out the, the, the digital scale based on where you're set in terms of gain. So that's not unexpected at this price point for me. So is that a deal breaker? No, I don't think so. It does also have a dual channel record option. So you can record one channel at the gain, a gain setting and the other channel is recorded at a lower gain setting so that if your talent do get really loud, you can always in post drop over to the lower gain track and use that audio instead. Now there are five gain settings, so they're discrete. It's not a continuous spectrum that you can set the gain to. Some people will see that as a problem. I don't see that as a problem at all. And in most cases, setting it to the mid setting with the included lavalier microphone for most kind of dialogue, um, interview type setups, that's gonna be the right setting for most people's voices and you can tweak it from there. Now, interestingly, you can put an XML file with settings uh, on the SD card so that when the Tascam DR10L boots up, it can read those settings and set itself that way. So that's a pretty neat little feature. So if you know what you want your settings to be, putting dropping that file on the um, SD card, every time you boot up, it's gonna be reset to those settings. Really kind of a nice feature. Now, one thing Tascam did was include a lavalier microphone with the kit. The build quality seems fine. It's really nice to have a locking plug. So it's a 3.5 millimeter TRS with a locking plug, just like the Sennheiser connectors that you probably are familiar with if you've seen other wireless systems with that. So that's a nice touch. It does come with an alligator lapel clip. I would say that the microphone is about a medium sized microphone for lavaliers. It is not nearly as small as a Countryman B6, for example, if you're familiar with that. Um, in terms of its overall diameter, it is larger than a Sankin Cost 11D, if you're familiar with that one. <laughs> it's wider diameter than a Rode lavalier microphone, if you're familiar with that one. So in any case, it's not as large as the largest I've seen, but it's also, I wouldn't call it tiny or small. The cable is a nice 1.5 meters long, which makes it very easy to pretty, pretty much mount it anywhere on the body. It does come with a metal grill, so you get a little bit of protection for the mic capsule itself. And it does not come, surprisingly, with a foam wind cover, but you can pick one of those up. On the aftermarket, b &H has plenty of options on that front. Now, the question is, for those that can afford wireless, why would you ever consider this? Well, I think there are a few cases where this is actually pretty handy. First of all, if you have shot for any period of time with wireless microphones, you probably have experienced a case where you got on the set to shoot, and you got everything set up, you monitored your audio and you realized, oh my gosh, there's something going wrong with the wireless. There's some sort of interference or I can't keep the signal or there are dropouts or something and you, you don't have time to figure it out. This is a perfect case for this type of unit. You can default back to this, put it on the talent and while you can't monitor it while you're filming, you can at least get it set up and you can work around those interference issues. Another reason you might want to use this is if you're sort of an independent video maker, filmmaker, vlogger, whatever it may be. Um, there are lots of people that shoot uh, pranks and they want something small and discreet. This is a really good option for those that have on, uh, are working with a tighter budget, but they still want really good audio quality. So you can get great audio quality with this without spending nearly as much as you would for a good professional grade wireless lavalier system. And then finally, if you're working in some cases with talent that are gonna be really far away, uh, this can be another great option as well. Or they're doing something where they're gonna be uh, doing some sort of action where you would rather sacrifice a $200 unit <laughs> than a $1,500 electrosonics unit. So um, this is that's, that's another use case here. If you've, you know, it's kind of a lower cost item that you can put out there and not worry about it quite as much as you would your more expensive gear. So in summary, there is the Tascam DR10L. I think that uh, given its price point, it's a really nice welcome addition to the market and to the market, I would say, of 
what do we call these, body pack recorders. Um, it has a nice set of features. I think the most critical and important features are pretty solid. There are a few little things. None of them are you know, deal breakers for me, the cons. So I think overall, this is a pretty good buy if this fits into your workflow. If you need something like wireless, you don't necessarily have the budget to go higher, or you'd like to have something in your kit that allows you something to fall back on if things get pretty ugly in terms of wireless. So I hope that was helpful for you. Go ahead and leave any questions you have down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Thank you.